Cam's in life. Hello, everyone, and we're going to go straight into the draft for this stream. This is the Titan Vanquisher League. This is Gentle Hearts Gaming Amor, and they are facing Dorado Gaming Delta today. And this is a big match for Gentle Hearts because if they get a win here today, they secure themselves playoffs in the Titan Vanquisher League. On the broadcast desk, my name is Ferris, joined again on this lovely Tuesday by Cilantro. Cilantro, how you feeling? How you doing? Are you ready to cast some League of Legends, my friend? Yeah, I'm very excited. Excited to see that we already have Udyr picked up before we even get through the bands. Uh, is that's that's yeah. phenomenal. A little bit of foreshadowing, maybe potentially coming down. But yeah, like you said, this is a crucial match win for Gentle Hearts Gaming. They are currently tied with Star Nation and Flame Horizon at a five-two record, but they really need to take a two-zero here. Something Gentle Hearts has only done one time since we've casted them every Tuesday. Uh, because they're sitting at the same map record as Star Nation Esports. So they're hoping that Star Nation get a map knocked off of them tonight and they can come home with a clean 2-0 onto the board going into playoffs. They really want to solidify that number two seed because next week they're going to be playing against Astral Spire, currently the number eight seed. So theoretically on paper is a free easy win for Gentle Hearts Gaming. So they really need this 2-0 to lock in their number two seat. And you see the two no bands on the side of Dorado. So for those of you who are not aware, Dorado is using a, an e-sub this game, and they may use it for the entirety of the series. They may not. Whatever their situation is, that is the reason why they have been unable to use their first two bands there on blue side. So their only ban for this game thus far is Kindred, which is great news for Gentle Hearts because now they can secure themselves some picks that may have been taken away from them. The first pick here for Dorado, it's going to be the Leona, something that we've been seeing a lot throughout pro play, throughout amateur leagues. Leona very strong, has great dueling potential, sets up teams to be able to deal lots of damage and overall not really can't really go wrong with it there are some counter picks but even the counter picks right now with how strong she is don't feel as effective as they normally do let's talk about this brand here cilantro do we remember what happened here with corndog picking this champion last week i mean every time this dude is on this champion he's had a 1v9 performance i think last time he started the game 6-0 and in the first like 10-15 minutes and the game just snowballed from there and ended up being a banned out champion later on into the matchup so i'm going to be expecting amazing things coming out of them going into this game it's going to be matched up by the zyra so the clear speed is going to be about a little bit faster for zyra because she wasn't hit as heavy with the nerfs as brand was in the previous patch so brand uh once he starts getting a couple kills maybe he'll be able to climb back up in to the same clear speed as Zyra after getting his E damage knocked down just a little tad so uh Kaisa Leona gonna be rounding out this bot side very strong very heavy engaged the only thing realistically that can match up against this kind of aggressiveness is an Ezreal however I still believe and firmly think that Ezreal will be eventually going could be going on into this mid lane but we do have a bot side technically picked up so we're gonna play around that so far and i like this avastar pick because like you mentioned leona was drafted and i did, do not think that you should ever draft leona this early because a champion like alistar a champion like braum can be picked and yeah it may not do as much damage but it sure as hell can bully her a way out of the lane it can bully her out of a team fight alistar she tries to go in and he can just whoop, headbutt her straight on out before she can get any of her full combos going or he can play that sort of disengage play that sort of counter engage on top of leona and she can get bursted down very easily so uh Ezreal, Alistar is what i'm thinking is going to be into this bot lane and you know Ezreal, two really strong early game combinations there coming out of both teams yeah, I'm always forgetting that Ezreal is a flex pick nowadays. Even with how much he <laughs> played mid, I always forget that. So this is something that Teals could play and that Gentle Hearts can adapt in their draft depending on what they see here from Dorado. Now, there is outplay potential, though, if this Ezreal is going bot lane. Alistair does great into Leona, like you were talking about there, Cilantro. However, the Solar Flare, combine it with a Killer Instinct, it can be hard for an Alistair to maneuver mm -hmm. and try and defend a Kaisa, who's now teleported onto your Ezreal's face, and keep the Leona back at the same time. So this is the sort of idea of why Kaisa is a Ezreal counterpick, although the range advantage for Ezreal is going to be a part of his win condition so if he can keep his spacing then 
Ezreal will have a good time. He just has to worry about those solar flares. And again, if this Ezreal is even heading into the bot lane because we don't know yet based on what gentle hearts have shown they've locked Cassante as their blind pick here on r4 they prioritize that mid or technically bot lane counter pick depending on where ezreal is going and we're going to see an irelia which cilantro this is interesting we don't normally see this pick in competitive play kind of a niche pick you need to be really good at it to be able to pull it off especially in competitive it has a hard time in team fights uh sometimes but I'm excited to see where this goes. And it looks like it's going to go into the mid lane now with these hovers here between the JC and the Jax. And we're going to see an Irelia mid. So this is a blind Irelia mid. And the Jax will match up the Cassante in the top lane. Yeah, I think this is where Teal's picks mid laner. I think that they, it's going to be Ezreal down into the bot side. Yep, Vex is going to be locked straight on in. I don't entirely agree with a blind Irelia pick here. This champion is very, very hit or miss in the competitive play. Sure, you can get very ahead early on. Uh, you're a dominant split pushing threat, but going into the team fights, especially against something like Alistar Cassante, yeah. like you really have to be like pivotal on your combos y your blades are going to come on out and hit avastar cassante frontline brand if he's positioned properly will be fine extra theoretically should never get hit by aurelia in the first place so uh vex can just fear you away when you try to full combo it it's it i don't entirely agree with the pick we're gonna have to see how dorado are able to pull it on off it seems to me like it's a bit more of a comfort pick because they are picking mid lane blind so uh looking at compositions as a whole here rounding it out both teams, pretty standard, pretty kind of meta composition. Vex, haven't seen too, too much. But going up against that kind of assassin pick, it makes complete sense. Fear is one of the most broken uh, abilities into the, into the game. And putting that up against a Irelia, against a Jax, you know, it, it's going to be able to work out pretty effectively. And Alistar can just headbutt Jax away when he wants to go in to, for these counter-strike engagement so uh the front line coming out of gentle hearts very proactive very effective i'm gonna it's gonna be kind of the keep everything away from etzreal kind of game here and he's just gonna be landing myth mystic shots from far when you look at the bot side if kaisa can get if and we go level one if we go level two if kaisa can get first auto attack off it's going to be her favorite but if if she keeps getting hit by these mystic shots and maybe the etzreal alistar get level two which i don't think they'll get level two prior going up against a kaisa leona uh, they could win out early on into this lane against Kai'Sa. You have the two strongest uh, early game AD carries in the game at the moment going head to head here. But overall, uh, I'm really liking Gentle Hearts' composition uh, just a little bit more. And I think what really brings it in for me is the Vex because you have a lot of jump in engage uh, for the side of Dorado. Even if the Killer Instinct, if Etro's positioned properly, Kai'Sa really isn't going to be able to get onto him within a team fight so she's gonna have to use the ulti to either get out or to engage with irelia and Jax, and that's where vex is going to be sitting around the front line with alistar and Cassante. gets that fear proc off the three men fear could pop into a brand ultimate bouncing right off of each other and even so like this this dorado gaming wants to engage into a brand vex Cassante, alistar no matter which way i see it unless somebody steps out of position it's not going to go well for them yeah, I have to echo absolutely everything you just said there, uh, Cilantro. Yeah, Alistair, Cassante, a brand, and we know how good Corndog's brand can be when you're essentially a full engaged team here from the side of Dorado. Aside from that Zyra, that is really the only deviation from your very clear-cut dive composition, and Gentle Hearts have gotten themselves the perfect anti-dive comp for themselves. So, so far as draft goes, game one, going to look, uh, it's looking up for them, and that's exactly what we want to see, but we're going to see if they can actually translate this draft edge here into a game one victory after the break that we are about to head into and when we come back we will be bringing you summoner's rift for game number one between gentle hearts and dorado gaming don't go anywhere we're on break excellent What do we got on spectator delay? Um, like three minutes and five seconds. Okay, enough time for me to get water. I'll be right back. Eat.
I'll be back. I'm back. Howdy. All right, I'm loading into game. Hell yeah. Alright, are you all ready to cast? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Do I have to... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Alright. Three, two, one, transition the scene. Mike's alive. And here we are into game number one, ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining the broadcast now, this is Gentle Hearts Gaming Amore facing Dorado Gaming Delta in the Titan Vanquisher League, and you are joined on the caster desk by myself and Ferris and Cilantro here, and we have ourselves a jungle fight to start it off here. Plants are summoned, and Cherry asserts dominance here for Dorado, getting that ward onto the Raptor camp. Yeah, kind of unfair, man. That's that's a 2v1 right there, or 3v1 essentially right there. You know someone's up those plants, it's going to do a lot more damage early on comparatively against the brand, the Zyra. Um, so that's not fair, man. Kornar just wants to farm up the camps and, you know, your AP junglers. Go go do your thing. Go full clear. Go back. Go, go to base. Buy Faded Ashes. Go full clear again. And by that time, you'll have a gank coming off. Uh, as we see, uh, Tactics is uh, doing a little bit of funny things to... We can be forced out Laos to maybe overstep a bit. Uh, as <laughs> the cavalry came in to help Corn Dog make it to his red buff, uh, figuring that the Zyra was still going to stick around. But we have a little bit of a match clear going on here. Both junglers starting on their respective red sides. They're going to be pathing to the opposite. Uh, it's interesting to see Corn Dog is moving towards this bot lane. Does feel that the uh, Kaisa and Leona have a bit of an early advantage in which that they do. So wants to get down there, get Ezreal, get. The Alistar potential first blood into the bot side, get them going early. Maybe Corn Dog picks up a kill for himself. Meanwhile, the Zyra is moving a little bit more towards this top side. You know, Jax versus Cassante going to be a little bit boring for the first couple of minutes throughout this game. Neither one of each other maybe finding an angle until we hit about level six where the Grandmaster at Arms is able to come online for Maharaga. Uh, but, you know, that Zyra coming up early could be a devastating little bit of an advantage for the Jax. Wants to get ahead of this Cassante. Yeah, and any type of Jax lead would be nice for Dorado because you can start to snowball that top matchup and Jax will become very OP later on. I mean, it's a little bit harder into what Gentle Hearts have drafted, but 
still, nonetheless, it would be nice to get that lead. Although Jax does have the push here in the top side. We can see there's heavy trading there on the mini map. Jax has that push. He's actually taking the very poor end of these trades, trying to push this wave in and bounce it so that Skedaddle is in better position to be ganked. Although a nice trade there from Maharaga there. The end tofu strikes from Skedaddle. I also want to compliment that Cassante skin. That looks really cool with the, I don't know, pink or white chroma, but Q3 just going to miss. Counter-Strike put up. Maharaga desperately wants to get this wave pushed in. Skedaddle's been baited into this one versus one though because here comes Cherry, the flash, the root, no flash on this Cassante. This should mean first blood nope. to the Jackson. Oh. So close. <laughs> But first blood for Dorado. What's crazy is honestly, Jax could have won that. And that's what's awesome about this champion being meta for the past four years. Uh, the, the Jax actually, or not Jax, uh, Cassante could have straight up actually won that 1v2 going one for one at minimum with Maharaga. Cherry, like I mentioned, was looking to roam up to the top side. Just after clearing up the blue buff, found the angle to be able to find the proper timing to go for the level three gank. Always got to be wary when there's a Syra on the field. All she needs is her root realistically to be able to gank you because she can get those plants spawned up in a nick of time. Corndog was able to clear up the scuttle at least into the bot side, so they're going to have a little bit of vision prio and positioning prio as Tactics and Kami are starting to push out this bot wave going into the first dragon, which is going to be up in about a minute now. You've got a Jax on the opposite side, as well as a Kai'Sa. Void Grubs, not necessarily something you want to give over. Jax, very notorious for being able to take down towers very effectively, and Kai'Sa, when she gets her attack speed going later on into the game, uh, with some Void Grubs, she will be able to shred those as well, so... I believe that right now, with the way you play this, uh, you, you've kind of got topside, not prior. Is Cornog looking to come up? Is he going to be able to find Cherry? See some fighting now. Is the sweeper's actually going to spot out Cherry here from Corndog? Is Skedaddle's going right in here for the 1v1? Has a favorable trade for the moment. Both junglers are fighting on the bottom. Top leaders are fighting on the top, but there's the counter strike that's going to come through at Q3. Can it happen? No! The flash from Maharaga is clean, and that's a solo kill for the Jax 2 0 now. And Cherry just keeps Corndog busy. What sucks is that even with Sheen, Cassante almost won that. And that's, that's absolutely the absurdness of this champion. Also kind of a little bit of an, oh, breathe force to be able to flash there just to be able to not to fear. Maybe Teal is looking for a full and solo bolo out into the mid lane. But yeah, I mean, the flashless Cassante is going to hurt a little bit there when you go ghost over flash. Because I feel like if you had flash in some of these engagements, he could have actually gone at least one for one. And Corndog was able to keep Sherry busy to buy time, force get out of people to win out that yeah. topside engagement, unfortunately. And it was really unlucky because Cherry was going to fully reset. The recall was about one second away from being completed. And then Corndog arrived Hungry? and revealed himself. Oh. And then Cherry stayed and distracted Corndog for Maharaga to win the one versus one. But a surprisingly topside focused game thus far based on the way that, like you mentioned, Cilantro, Cherry's been pathing. So you normally don't see this to be the focal point of games for the moment, but things are going to change here. Now we have a 3v3 in the bot side. Walk up here from Tactics, going to try and find that pulverized. They land a lot of CC and damage here onto Cherry, who's taking down with the Ignite. Not quite going to be enough damage to finish off the kill, but for the moment, Gentle Hearts have their opponents running for their tower. They want to pursue this. Corn Dogs walking forward, Kami walking forward, but that's going to be the end of the play. Gentle Hearts hold their ground down here. Yeah, that's going to open up the... Should, theoretically, open up the first dragon of the game and begin to stack it. We see that things are going to be able to come down. Kami and Tactics are going to be able to roam up after rubbing, pushing in that bot side wave. And with the HP that Sherry had, not going to be able to realistically respond with a Void Grobs trade-off. So both these two junglers looking to go for the initial dragon at the start. Very interesting, because I think with the top side prio that you have out of Sherry, I would have loved to have seen a reset after that top side and then push in for those Void Grobs instead of going for the dragon, knowing that Corndog doesn't have that top side prio wants to kind of go for uh get it gaining at least some advantages on the map as mid lane's going even has about a 10 cs lead though in the last chapter picked up so teals is gonna be able to push out breathe oh, you gotta know that he's looking to all out though from skedaddle right into the tower this would be a big kill because it's a shutdown but there's the counter strike that's going no to way. land can maharag do it again no skedaddle excellent usage of the wall to bring maharaga to his doom 
I hate this champion, man. I swear to God, I hate this champion. Why? He should not be able to win these. He's got tabbies in a full sheen. How is he able to win this? Like, that, that champion is, is not balanced at all. He's down 10 CS as well. All he has is a door and shield and a refill pot. You're telling me that the boots make that difference? No, I do not believe so. I mean, a couple tower shots definitely. Yeah, make I was going to say, the tower Jeez. made a little difference, but, but still. But geez, like, that champion, man, the all out, I mean, played perfectly by Skedaddle for baiting him into the wall to be able to get the all out underneath the turret knowing the counter strike was not up just yet so was not going to be able to dodge out most of the tower shots he was able to eat two before the counter strike was able to come down corn dog is going to be able to grab at least two of the void grubs good job by sherry picking up at least one though knowing that he's not going to be able to maintain this top side prowl because after getting the dragon corn dog was going to go for a reset move to the top camps and move towards this objective because of the lack of time that sherry had for the objective trade-off so she takes at least one that means that they, when they go to fight for the next three if she gets all three she's sitting at an advantage yeah and it's interesting the way that gentle hearts move themselves around the map they actually move skedaddle down here to the bot lane maybe anticipating a fight initiated by uh by dorado at those two grubs but the solo kill from skedaddle is very important not only does he bring himself back into this lane but he also opened the door for gentle hearts to secure grubs when based on the way the first few minutes went they probably shouldn't have been able to grab that as now we see okay maharaga wants to get this wave in having a really hard time against the long range that teals has here also teals is here on the top side they did some really weird swappage i don't know if that was just lane states or the way they wanted to move around the map for grubs but nonetheless teals is there and cherry's here to help the jacks push in the wave because having a very hard time actually getting that in with the range disadvantage and now husky templar and loss here as well inside of this mid lane there's been cilantro we got people all over the map here what on earth has happened to these wave states his tactics gonna land a headbutt here onto loss who has hit level six though and is going to use the zenith blade to engage and force the flash off of the cow and that should just be a raw pick and mm. the flash gone from corn dog with the solar flare dorado getting some nice advantages for themselves here ahead of this two, uh, drake in two minutes so my analysis probably and what i'm thinking if i'm gentle hearts going into the lane swap assignments here is mid lane has kind of gone about even and they want to slow down what's happening into the top side so they're going to move teals on up continue to farm up on this mage and they want to move bot side into the mid lane this is going to force a bot side roam from husky templar and laos into the mid lane as well a little bit preemptively they want to be able to thrive into this bot side but if, with them being in this mid lane this opens up more angles for cornog to be able to exemplify that bot side prio that they want to have especially after laos hitting level six it's going to be a little bit harder to all in an etzreal and alistar into the mid lane comparatively to the bot side especially when cornog could be coming from any which way so it's going to be able to help him get that sort of prioritization and they want to move the irelia down because they've already started early game dragon sacking and they really need to deny these next void grubs and what oh, better way it's be in, in trouble move. here there's going to be the arcane shift out but tactics has the flash killer instinct from husky templar not going to finish the job onto kami but tactics is going to be the sacrifice and a nice play from dorado in the mid lane and they might be able to grab some plates for themselves as well here as maharaga is also moving down from the top lane and they could look to dive Kami here, who does not have Flash, does not have Clutch. The Flash Zenith Blade, Laos is going to land it. There's going to be the stun. Solar Flare misses, but it shouldn't be a problem. They land the kill. Now Corndog has to run away because there's four people sitting here in front of him, but Skedaddle's here to save the day. Excellent stun now onto Cherry. That should be a one-for-one -one trade. The all-out oh. comes through to bring him towards Husky Templar near the Wolf Pit. That was an excellent taxi saying, thank you, Jungler, for bringing him right to me. Headbutt here for Tactics on the assist. A double kill for Skedaddle. And Gentle Hearts turn it around. Uh, and a big thing about that is I believe that the Irelia was nowhere in that fight. And, and what Gentle Hearts want to do is they want to keep this champion away from fighting as much as possible in the early game. Because later on in the game, she doesn't get these leads. She doesn't get ahead. She's theoretically going to be useful, useless in the team fights. Sure, she, she's still down in CS. Uh, against the majority of the members except for skedaddle uh on the side of gentle hearts so they're playing the map a little bit away from run away from irelia sort of because they know that this early on she has the advantage she throws out those blades into the the 4v4s into the 3v4s that 
that will swing the tide around and she can pick up a couple kills, it's going to be really hard for Gentle Hearts to eventually will outscale, but they don't want to have to be playing against a strong Aurelia early game when they can do stuff like this early game without having to worry about Aurelia. They've already got two dragons stacked up. They're going to be looking to move in to potentially the next Void Grubs as here's Tactics and Kami already in the mid lane and can start pushing on up to that. As Jerry, you only need to pick up at least two of these to deny four coming out of Gentle Hearts. Well, here so goes the fight. fight. Solar Flare. It's going to miss Corndog, and so is the Zenith Blade. So Laos kind of botches the engage there. There is one Grub left alive, but critically, Dorado, yeah, they only have two Grubs right now, so they want one more there. Like you said, Cilantro, to deny those Void Mites. Mystic Shots landing onto Laos, trying to take away as much HP from that Leona as you can. And engage options have been mitigated now, but the Flash Forward from Breathe going to use the ultimate there to try and get the kills that are necessary to win this fight, and they're going to get onto Kami, who, remember, had had no flash from the previous play. Teals is here to join the party as well, and it's going to disengage for the rest of the team, and it's going to be a one for zero for Dorado. And Aurelia shows up, and look what happens. She gets a kill, the blades come out, they lock up the back line, and it's basically fight over from there. Sherry's going to be able to push on in and take the last two Void Grubs. She's so... Oh, they're going to pull them out a little bit, maybe thinking that Corndog and Teals could look for an engage. Teals still has the ulti, so it's 100% possible... But Corndog is just going to end up giving them straight on out. So Void Mites will be picked up for the side of Dorado. So you get two Dragon stacks and they get Void Mites. Overall, not a great trade, but you will deal with it. Right now, uh, you just got to kind of slow the game down a little bit and make it to where Dorado has to play into you. Because right now, Dorado is initiating on their terms. And that's where we've seen before that Gentle Hearts hasn't really thrived. They kind of want to be this tempo setters. They kind of want to be uh the ones you want to play to initiate these There's fights gonna they be a to storm or a shadow surge there onto maharaga teals flies right in out of nowhere and is maharaga going to be able to escape the ward hop means likely now teals does have flash is going to use it is going to miss the skill shot there but is going to force the teleport here from breathe who has a lot of caster minions to work with going to use the w to put them onto one hp and start to stack up that passive but teals is out of there and that was a close call for Maharaga, for sure, down in that bot side. And something that we need to pay attention to is the pick potential of this Vex, especially once more items come through Cilantro. Yeah, I mean, she's already got the Ludens picked up. Was looking to get those Dark Seal stacking, mostly off of assists within the team fight. You know, procking fear, doing as much damage as possible, in initiating fights with the ultimate as well. You know, Skedaddle is able to at least come back in terms of CS after proxying a ton of bot top side waves. Where meanwhile we have Maharaga picking up the Trinity Force, so we'll have a little bit of an advantage in the one on one against Skedaddle for the time being. He's a little bit tankier with that Ice Spring Gauntlet being picked up as Steel is forced to run away from the bot side turret because it will fall to breathe here breathe on the aurelia finding their way back into the game after that fight you know they gentle hearts did their best to avoid her but at some point she's just going to be able to tp into the fight and there's nothing realistically you can do about it meanwhile the rift hero has spawned up and corndog has initiated this so at least if you can't get the void mites you can get the big void mite and we look to take down potentially this mid lane turret because we got about a minute and 40 before the next dragon comes online. And we are going to be wanting to pick that one up from Gentle Hearts. That's the biggest advantage you have right now in this game is that dragon stacking because you don't really have champion advantages, quite frankly, yet. As the Kaisa has finished up the static stim, she's going to have a little bit more wave clear and tempo prior to the. Can you speak up? You got quiet on stream. The, uh, then the Ezreal. So we'll see how they decide to play this out. You know, they have, they're trying to get that mid tower knocked down for the moment. Their mid tower themselves is actually quite healthy, and they're actually going to utilize this Rift Herald that they've just slain to get that mid tower down. And that should open up the map now more for Gentle Hearts and will help them set up actually for these, these dragons, these future dragons that are coming up, like the next Drake coming up in one minute. It's not that Infernal Drake, like it says on the Spectator client. I've learned to not trust that. And uh, <laughs> it's yeah, hex tech. It looks, yeah, hex tech, exactly. So uh, they're setting up for that hex tech soul, the mid tower that's fallen. That's going to be able to give them uh, an easier time setting up, although they uh -oh. could be getting collapsed on here. Flash over the wall from Laos and is going to do their very best. The Zenith Blade does miss the fear, goes down. Corndog does have Flash, not going to use it for the moment. Going to try and buy himself some space. He's going to use his ultimate here to try and do as much damage as possible. The Pyroclasm does a lot, but it doesn't do enough. And now Teals is next on the menu here. Breathe has more than enough damage to finish him off. It's a two for zero in favor of Dorado here right before the dragon. Kami can only throw some mystic shots and hit the Gromp. 
and Toronto feeling confident here on that play that they had moving towards them as now Husky Templar lands the Akathian range oh. onto Kami. Not going to commit that killer instinct forward. Yeah, this is really neat too. You can just turn and go ahead and fight at the striking. Great play coming out from the side of Dorado, recognizing that Corndog and Teals were caught out into this bot side. Still farming up. Corndog was caught out in his own jungle, farming up some camps, and then they spotted Teals into the bot side with no bot tier one to realistically back a fall off to. It's basically a free rundown coming out as maybe now. 5v3 tactics is going to be targeted here and probably going to drop. Going to use the flash to try and get himself over the wall. The all used from Skidaddle on the backside to pull in Husky Templar. The rest of Dorado are finishing off the remaining members from Gentle Hearts on the top side of the fight. But on the bottom side, it's actually going to go the way of Gentle Hearts. It's a two for two in the fight thus far. Skidaddle, pay attention to him. Still half HP, still in his all out form. Teals is in the back line to try and help with the Zenith Blade. will close the gap for that Leona and the Counter Strike comes through for the Jax. It's still another one for one, but Skidaddle, can he pull this miracle play off? back into his tankier form now with Q3 charging and pacing back and forth, but I don't think he wants any more of this fight. What a messy exchange in the mid lane. Yeah, and off of all of that, the only thing that's still fed on your team of Gentle Hearts is the Cassante. Well, that's a great champion, can do much of realistically anything you want. Uh, it's not really where you want to be at a Gentle Hearts. You want this... Vex to have more in her pocket. You want uh, Kami on the extra to be able to pump out more damage as well. Just completing the Triforce soon to finish off the Manimer. But the, the you're so far behind. What like it feels like you shouldn't be because realistically you have two dragons. You're kind of even on turrets. You know it feels like you shouldn't be far behind on Gentle Hearts. But in terms of these team fights, in terms of how things are going, you are so far behind. There's a 3k gold lead stacking up to be soon a little bit more. And where we mentioned, oh, well, you know, the Triforce is going to do more than the Kai'Sa that has just static shift pickaxe right now. Yeah, that's going to do a little bit more, but it doesn't matter if you're not taking team fight. The Kai'Sa is initiating team fights with Breathe, with Laos, and their start setting the tempo. Maharaga 5-1 and one has finished up the Black Cleaver 2 with the Tabais. He's just going to be able to counter-strike engage whenever he realistically pleases, especially when Teals doesn't already, Teals has already used that fear bar and it's offline, so... The team fight's just not going the way of Gentle Hearts, and they've got to find a way oh, to be able to turn this round. Raga in the top lane. Teals does have the fear, going to use it, but that leap strike is on a low cooldown. This time, Maharaga forcing Teals to retreat back towards the tower, but Cherry could be walking into both a brand and tactics Alistair, but the plants are going to spot them out. And I believe the problem right now for Gentle Hearts in these team fights is they don't have a lot of peel for their back line. Now, Ezreal is quite self-sufficient with his peel with the Arcane Shift, but it simply hasn't been enough this time around. It hasn't been in the right position to keep himself safe. Tactics isn't enough as the solo front line here when Skedaddle is elsewhere, like in the mid lane fight that we saw earlier, took Skedaddle a while to actually join. And Tactics was the first target and the only tank there for Gentle Hearts. So once he falls, there is nothing stopping both Mahal Haraga, Breathe, and even Husky Templar with Killer Instinct to just dive the back line that is Teals and Kami and then run the fight. So for Gentle Hearts, they have to be able to play nicely with their front line in order to avoid this weakness. And they are doing an excellent job of finding Cherry here in the middle of the river. The all out will bring him right to the rest of the team. And what can they do with this pick now for the next 30 seconds? Mm, go get a little bit of Baron positioning. Maybe you could push out waves that's all realistically you have at the moment uh you don't have enough damage yet to be able to full 100 a baron at the moment kami still needs a little bit more into the tool belt uh obviously brand does a ton of damage but still not enough realistically to burn down the baron just yet so you could get a bot tier one for your troubles you get a couple jungle, jungle camps away really just try and this widen this gold lead that the Dorado Gaming have picked up. But solo kills like that, finding those mistakes because Dorado feel comfortable. They're in a great position in the game right now, right? So that is going to open up opportunities for mistakes end up happening. Sherry pushes into the river, feels a little bit more safer than they are, feels get a bit more confident, gets caught out. That, boom. Stuff like that is where Gentle Heart needs to do. They need to make it to where this Dorado team plays into them and don't let them set the tone. You have a wonderful front line that's Skedaddle and oh, Tactics. Skedaddle. You just got to use it. 
hit by the stun here. The Vanguard's Edge going to be used. Pathmaker, though, going to reduce some damage, but Skedaddle, I think you're all but dead here, my friend. Blade of the Rune King from Breathe is more than enough to eat through the Cassante's health bar. And an overextension from the Gentle Hearts top laner here. 37 seconds before this next Hextech Drake spawns. Could be detrimental here, Cilantro. And it's going to be Dorado that is going to have the positioning here. So does Gentle Hearts look to contest this 4 versus 5? Skedaddle does have Unleashed Teleport available. They're getting Baron positioning and maybe looking for a trade. But it's going to be hard to actually get that first step into the river. And they're also going to lose mid prow because of this as well. And I believe this tier three here in the mid lane finally going to drop. And Dorado's going to secure that for themselves. They're looking for a fight. That Void Seeker does not land. Tactics is going to run right into Cherry and force that flash. That's going to feel nice, but they're split up from the rest of the team. The cleanse comes through for calling, but the Killer Instinct from Husky Templar is going to be enough to finish off this kill. He's ticking down with the Ignite and should be able to drop. Now let's look at the other side of the fight. Cherry's getting burnt by that Pyroclasm. Teals is into multiple people, but doesn't have the damage to keep himself alive. Maharag is still very healthy. Skedaddle on the other side. Both top laners running the show for the moment, but it's Gentle Hearts with the numbers advantage here. Maharaga cannot deal with the amount of CC that the Alistair and the Brand have to offer Husky Templar trying to do the DPS to take down the Cassante. It's not going to be enough. And it's a three people alive here for Gentle Hearts. They win the fight four for two. I guess having a fed Cassante can make a difference later on because he just kept that Husky Templar out of the majority of the fight as well as Laos. And, you know, Maharaka engages is thinking... I'm a Fed Jax, I could do this, I can 1v4, but in reality, you know, Teals gets the fear bar off, Cornhog is there with the, you know, the ultimate comes straight down, it's bouncing left, right, and center, it gets stunned up as well, and it's just not much that the Jax can do in that scenario. Sure, you have to Counter-Strike, sure, you have the capabilities to be able to burst down a target like Teals very fast, but once you get that one kill, it's realistically okay. Uh, we have time to kind of chunk you down and now you got one kill so we're going to be able to finish you off later on but great play coming out of laos love the way that they engaged that straight on to call me forced out the uh forced out the cleanse early on as well so i didn't particularly like the positioning coming out of gentle hearts uh positioning a bit more towards that river towards that baron sure you could threaten a baron start but you don't have the damage realistically to do be threatening so to speak so dorado gaming know that and just say hey you want to go start and try and flip the baron and put, pull us off the dragon that's cool we'll just go kill you because you'll take a ton of damage to baron and they kind of did almost exactly that they pushed into the positioning that gentle hearts backed themselves up into and would look devastating until skedaddle was able to come in off the tp and i believe that breathe not having the ultimate off of that bot side trade that had ended up going Going down is definitely uh something that you have to factor in when you talk about how that team fight played out certainly and yeah the, those fights were messy from both sides you had kami who was split up from the rest of the gentle hearts but you also had cherry who had to burn flash early on as solar flare going to be used it's going to hit kami who's actually going to buffer his arcane strift but it's not going to be enough there goes the strangle thorns and they're going to pick off this ezreal once again tactics cannot apply enough peel but there's the pyroclasm that's going to hit onto two and maybe laos has gone too far forward so now it's a one for one skedaddle here is fighting plants on the flank wanting to find another excellent team fight performance here but what was a pick for Dorado ended up being a one for one when they aggressed too far forward. Yeah, I know. Big props to Laos is able to find these angles on the Kami left, right, and center. You know, shutting down the AD carry of Gentle Hearts Gaming. You know, felt that they have the advantage. And, and Laos is trying to push the lead that Dorado Gaming have because it's minuscule at that. It's it's a lead, but it's it's enough. It's a very minuscule lead, but it's more than enough to win out these team fights, especially when Kami is out of the fight and they have their AD carry alive. So they want to push these leads, and I could see Laos just pulling the team forward, like, hey, come on, let's fight, let's fight, let's fight, but ends up getting caught out themselves. Corndog is starting to bounce back into this damage. The Void Jewel is able to pick up. So it's going to be bouncing against that Wits and, and Merc Treads that the Aurelia picked up. Aurelia, a really big threat here. There's they kind of surge. simmered down. Teals looking for the pick on a Maharaga. It's going to deal a little bit of damage, but he is going to just get out of dodge apologies for interrupting you cilantro there i thought we had ourselves a potential pick but teals is just using those abilities to push that Jax off the tower yeah i was just gonna say i was get, just getting into this Jax. Is they don't really i feel like they don't care too much about maharaga with how that fight went down in the mid lane maharaga only was able to find teals and so there you see teals basically almost chunks maharaga there and he's not picked up realistically any the mechanic rick corner is the only magic resist that he has online at the moment and so 
they're not too scared of this Jax. If he engages, Gornok can CC him. Teals can cast the Fear Bar online, and Tactex can just pulverize him. So they're not really afraid of him as much as they're a little bit more afraid of being able to chunk down this Irelia. We've seen, you know, the Divine Sunder is potentially starting to get built up here. Has Blade of the Rune King, has those Merc Treads. So she gets a potential flank TP, comes over the wall with the Vanguard Edge. She is definitely the number one threat. It's, they're not too worried about Kai. I mean, Kais is pretty strong right now as well, but she's kind of like the the last engage tool. Like, okay, we hit a solar flare onto Kami. I'm going to kill her instinct and, and, and execute him. So they're not too worried here. Slaus may be caught out. Slaus could be caught out. There's a stun, and there's going to be the combination on top of him. He's going to use the flash to try and get out of this one, but it's not going to buy enough space. And Laos will be taken down. The Crypt Bloom heal will cover the rift in that beautiful green color and now gentle hearts have control of this barren area and will they start the baron though is the question and can. tofo strikes onto the baron and they're going to bring this one up i don't believe they have intentions of just finishing it straight oh. up they want to turn and great poke here from both oh, they can. and kami and the last oh. mystic shot will land and this is exactly how gentle hearts needs to play out their team using their range to their advantage to get themselves some advantages TP. and now here comes the tp maharaga trying to camp it with the counter strike but does not time it right there's the killer instinct there from husky templar now the rest of dorado has been Split, but Skedaddle's going too far forward. The Kyron Strike is going to stun him up, but he's very tanky. And now all that Gentle Hearts has to do is pinch the rest of these people. Cherry's still alive. Headbutt Pulverize going to go down onto this Zyra, who does not have Flash. The Shadow Surge is going to come through. They're going to layer all their damage now onto the Jungler here of Dorado and take him out. And now this next Shadow Surge is going to go left. Laos out from the Death Realm is going to join the rest of the team. Going to drop a Solar Flare here to apply some slows. The Void Seeker going to chip them here. They are quite low, though, so Gentle Hearts has to play a little cautiously in this fight. This is an AP Kyron and those void seekers do hurt and they aren't able to get the baron here so it's actually dorado that stall long enough and they might just be able to take this hex tech drake for themselves with the low, higher level hp bars yeah i see no reason to not take kais is there jax is there it should be a free dragon they're gonna delay the baron they're gonna delay soul a little bit but uh hesky templar throughout that fight is Kind of like showcased a little bit why this gentle hearts team's not really scared of him. Tactics just ate a full isolated Q from this from this Kaisa and it did not move his health bar whatsoever. So unless Husky Templar can find these angles onto Corn Dog and Kami, which so far they're kind of Gentle Hearts is now starting to play the way that we needed Shadow them to play. Onto Laos. They know this Leona has no flash, so they're looking to engage here. Headbutt Pulverize will keep him locked down for the moment, but here comes a uh, here teleport comes Maharaga. that Gentle Hearts do have to respect. Maharaga now Counter-Strike enabled, going to stun up too, and Skedaddle goes into the front line, but this time around, he can't wreak as much havoc as he would like, and now it's going to be Gentle Hearts that just have to play the peelback game here. Taxis is tanking up, and Maharaga can't find another stun here with that Counter-Strike, and Kami playing his space to the max here, trying to land as much Mystic Shots as possible, making it that much more difficult for Dorado to go in. Laos does not have the Solar Flare available, so cannot engage from range. And it's a one for zero in favor of Dorado, but they don't have the real advantage, or at least enough of advantage to start the Baron. They're just going to go back to clearing their waves. Yeah, I feel like Gentle Hearts was in a great position, and then they tossed it out the window. Like, sure, Teals lands the ultimate onto Laos, but it's a, it's a Leona. Why are we engaging on a Leona? Like, why... She has Warmog, she has W that still tanks her up like crazy. She's got the Berk Treads as well. Like, why we do not need to engage onto a Leona because we're, that, that just opened up a great TP for Maharaga. Gets the, into the back line with Counter-Strike and is able to stun everyone up. So there's no real follow-up coming straight down. So the damage is not there. And instead, Skedaddle, who's on the front line with Teals, unfortunately not able to get out because the Stranglethorns are able to lock him up as well as the Vanguard Edge. So he just gets killed for no reason because we took a fight. We realistically did not need to take a fight. We could have just, you know, threatened the Leona, pushed her out of the river, pushed her into the jungle, recognized her positioning, and then moved towards taking the bear and prio positioning. Maybe look for some... I wouldn't look for a flip because I don't feel like our damage is just that threatening so if we look for a flip then breeze just tps on in gets the vanguard edge and just dashes through us all getting executed so i feel like it was just a little bit of a misplay a miscommunication as now the dorado is going to go ahead and threaten up this bear and they're feeling that they have the damage breathe has the full path of stocks online this. Yeah, they yep, are, that's Zyra for you. Absolutely burning it. Zyra plus the Kaisa DPS, but here is Gentle Hearts to push them off of it. 
and the Baron will reset back to full HP. Look at Skedaddle's positioning here on that flank. Tactic's going to miss that Pulverize, but it's the vision game for the moment, and Gentle Hearts are winning this one out. They're able to clear away some vision and get some vision of their own. Skedaddle positioning himself around this wolf pit, and it's helping for Gentle Hearts to get priority of this mid wave. Pay attention to Maharaga on the top side of the map, who's now going to start to split push here and can threaten this top tier two. But the push will continue for Gentle Hearts. It's actually going to halt now. They're going to head back towards the Baron. Skedaddle's going to recall now and catch this top side wave. And I think the full resets are going to come through here for, for Gentle Hearts as well. And they're going to give that mid control back over to Dorado. But they have to be careful because if they reset, they only have teleport available here on Teals. And we just saw how much damage that Dorado can deal to this Baron. So if they do reset... And Dorado is aware of this. They have the damage here to rush this Baron within about 10, 15 seconds. And so Gentle I Hearts agree. needs to make sure that they have that presence on the map around this objective. As let's look at the minimap here. Well, I thought they were actually going to go to make a play onto Skedaddle, but it looks for the moment it's going to be all right now. But we see heavy trading here. Laos is playing with the idea of a fight here in the top side. Uh, they could potentially have caught out Maharaga, but Laos is once again at the right place at the right time. Really good props to this support player. Like, oh my, are they positioning in the right oh, place flash. at the right time? Breathe. There's the, the flash, Vanguard's man. edge. They're going right down onto this oh, Vex, no. and no fear there, Cilantro, to stop that from happening. But it's three people overloaded to the bot side. There is a teleport yes, available on Breathe. They're going to try and burn this down. Is Gentle Hearts here before the rest of the cavalry can arrive? And it actually just looks like Dorado is going to say, hey, you have that Baron. We are going to trade it back here through a Tier 2 and maybe even a Tier 3 tower as well. The Smite's going to come down, so Gentle Hearts secure themselves the Baron, but they have to go back and defend their base. But Maharaga and Laos here, they're just going to play cancel. And next, Counter-Strike is going to land onto three people. They're going to try and do enough damage to take out this Leona and this Tracks, but it's not quite going to be enough. There's the true shot barrage there from Kami, and the resets are coming through from Corndog, but they're heading on to the Nexus Tower. It's a full base race here. This macro from Toronto has been incredible. Corndog doesn't quite have the damage to finish off the kills. What are we watching in front of our eyes here? So launch of the Nexus is burning. Breathe and Husky Temple, and they just have to focus the Nexus, and they win the game. Are you serious? Out of nowhere, it's done. Sure, and Toronto take game one. Classic NA trade off. I receive the Baron, you receive my Nexus. Incredible. That is the classic we've seen in LCS time and time and time again. It's happened before. It, it, it's an NA staple here. For some Should reason, we love taking the Baron more than we love defending our own Nexus. So great play there coming out of the side of Dorado. Like, Full on props to them. Cherry recognizes that they're spotted out on the bot side, and that's going to open up an engage angle onto the Baron for the side of Gentle Hearts Gaming. But what do they do? The Maharag is into the top side there. Laos is also there. That's the only two CC champions you need because all you need to do is stop the recalls. They have four Void Grubs, so they had the Void Mites online, and that's arguably just about as effective as a Baron when you're. Aurelia and Kaisa are moving into this base rush as well. ADC is well known for bursting down turrets and also Husky is the goat there for bursting down the Nexus later on. So great macro play showing out of the side of Dorado and some weaknesses spotted from the side of Gentle Hearts. It was really Dorado setting the tempo, setting the pace, initiating everything that they possibly could in this game and Toronto started to struggle it was pretty late before Kornog was able to fully come online in these team fights and get that damage popping out and the whole bot side was just weak sided throughout majority of the game so when we hit into the draft board we're gonna have to talk about how we can better effectively play the tempo game against this Dorado team because we drafted a little bit for the later the later half of the game and it ended up not paying off and it was quite the high-pressure situation towards the end. And Dorado, they executed quite well. You know, sometimes in the heat of the moment, when that Nexus is exposed, you think to yourself, oh, if I just hit the Nexus here, I might get killed. I might have to fight my way out of this. Oh, there's so many things happening in front of me. My teammate is dying over here. Uh, my support is, is CCing their ADC. I have an open avenue to hit them. You never, ever focus on anything but the Nexus. And that is exactly mm -hmm. what both Breathe and uh, Husky Templar did. Just like you were saying, Cilantro, you always have to focus the Nexus. That's exactly what they did. Nothing else matters if that Nexus explodes. And they played yep. that 
it's like a it's like a set play almost here. They called it. They're like, this is the perfect setup for us. Let's go for it. And they executed well. So, I mean, aside from the play there from Dorado that ended up winning the game, the rest of the game was quite neck and neck. We saw advantages go Dorado's way early on in the top side, but then some mistakes happened and Gentle Hearts got that back. Some back and forth fights. Very uh, strong performances from both top laners, I would say. But really, that play just flipped the game on its head. And then Dorado steals that first victory. That They get the first nexus. So we're going to see how well Gentle Hearts can respond here in the game number two. Before we head to our break, I do want to just give a quick shout out to Arma.gg, who is uh, selling the Gentle Hearts gaming merchandise. If you want to grab your Gentle Hearts gaming merchandise, like the stuff I got on here, then head over to Arma.gg and grab it for yourself. We've got jerseys, we got shirts, we got hoodies, and then you may actually climb in your solo key games rocking that Gentle Hearts. So <laughs> make sure to, fa uh, to support your favorite organization and cop that merchandise for yourself, and we will head to a short break now. And when we're back, we'll see if Gentle Hearts gaming can bounce back after that unfortunate game one loss in game number two. Don't go anywhere. We're on break. Unfortunate. That was a yeah. crazy ending. I was not expecting that at all. Gentle hearts are going to be blue side. Wow. Oh, and draft flows down. Uh, oh. No. 